What's up, everybody? And today we're doing another update on the Ukraine-Russia situation. Um, things are still not de-escalating, unfortunately. It's still going kind of rough. Um, so it's important that we do these videos and get the information out there for everyone. We've got some more updates on uh, the BBC website, which I think is... Um, and I've said this multiple times on these updates now, is the mu most consistent across the board when it comes to the political spectrum. It has the most consistent headlines of um from what i've seen from what i've looked at also we're going to be looking at the live map seeing if there's any updates on where i can possibly give my insight as a former royal marines commander of what i think is going to happen um and we'll go from there guys okay but question of the day comes from venom mansa five it says question do you think you should that sh do you think that should nato that doesn't sound right. Do you think that... I'm just going to rephrase it. Do you think that NATO should send fighter jets to Ukraine? No NATO pilots, but used by NATO, by Ukraine pilots. Ukraine has been holding longer than expected by everybody, and Russia is now trying to change its tactics for air superiority. So, a few things here. I think Russia would use any excuse to point the finger at NATO. So, if we give them the fighter jets it's another thing you're going to be pointed at nato um so i mean they're already doing that anyway so why not right but at the same time this is a very um a very delicate balance of not wanting to step too much on nato's toes because if nato get involved russia will get crushed right so there's a there's a balance there where russia's pointing the fingers at nato as much as possible and blaming them for the whole thing but at the same time, I don't think Russia want NATO to get involved. Um, otherwise, it would be disastrous for them. It'd be disastrous for everyone, let's be honest. But it would be even more disastrous for Russia. Um, I think Russia's priority now is they're going to use some chemical weapons. Unfortunately, that's what I think they're going to do. Um, but we'll get into that in a bit and we'll kind of go over that. Um, but if you want your question answered, leave it in the comment section down below and we will certainly go over that and answer it in the next video. Uh, let's pull up the BBC website with a summary. Again, the most consistent I've seen across the political spectrum of um, headlines and uh, it gives me a good summary. Um, I read the Sky Sports what, and Sky Sports, the Sky News one um the other day and it wasn't as consistent across the political spectrum as this one so i'm still staying on bbc if you think you've got a better one let me know in the comments down below um but this is the best to just get the general summary of what's going on so i can give you my insight and thought of what i think is uh going to happen so let's start oh and then we'll then we'll look at the the live map because i've got some updates on that that i want to talk about as well some important updates but let's go over these summary Ukrainian president tells the news conference that 1,300 Ukrainian troops have died in conflict so far. Too many. Too many. I think they've lost less than um, Russia, though. I do. He says around 500 to 600 Russian troops surrendered to Ukrainian forces on Friday, but the BBC cannot verify his claims. Okay, but can they verify any of these claims, like the, the, the 1,300 troops have died? I, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Ukraine are not... I mean, they could lower that number to make them look like they're, they're not losing as bad as what everyone, you know, like to make them look a little bit stronger than they actually are. But at the end of the day, I don't think there's any reason for them to, to um, deny these claims. 500, 600 Russian troops surrendered. That's important. Surrendered troops are important for many different reasons. It shows lack of morale in Russia um, or it shows Ukrainian forces doing better than Russia expected. But it also means that they may be able to get some sort of intel from them from them uh, soldiers. So that's really important that that happens. Again, Ukraine are holding off way better than Russia thought. Way better than Russia thought. So this is good to see. A convoy of women and children being evacuated from the village outside Kiev is attacked, killing seven people. What an absolute disgrace. Any Russian soldiers seen attacking civvies needs to be uh account needs to take needs to be taken accountable right they need to be taken accountable for their actions it's ridiculous it's ridiculous if i was in the military and my commander told me to kill innocent civ civvies i would say no i would be like no i'm not doing it so i know everyone's pointing the po pointing the finger at putin but any russian soldiers doing that no you're just as bad as putin okay so you know we've got to we've got to hold them accountable We've got to hold them accountable. Everyone's pointing the fingers at, at Putin. And there's a lot of footage of Russian soldiers saying, I don't know why I'm here. I don't want to fight this war. That's okay for them people, individuals. But the ones that are killing civvies, they need to be taken to accountable, just taken accountable just as much as Putin is. It's an absolute disgrace. 
A military airfield south of Kiev is hit by missiles, as reports suggest the bulk of Russian forces are just 25 kilometers from the city. This is important. Uh, we will go over the live map and talk more about this one in a minute, uh, because there are some live updates around Kiev that I kind of want to go over. Some things that I predicted would happen, some things that I didn't. So I definitely want to go over that and, and see what's going on there. French, pre French president and German counselor urge Russia President Vladimir Putin to agree a ceasefire. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They can urge it as much as possible, but Putin won't do it. People in the city of Maripol are said to be um, enduring freezing temperatures with no power and little food and water. Again, we kind of went over that in the last video, how, in my opinion, um, NATO should be really kind of keeping an eye on the humanitarian aspects of this now um obviously they can give as many weapons to the ukraine forces as possible um but in my opinion we really need to focus on the humanitarian getting these people out of ukraine into safe countries not redirected to russia like russia are manipulating these people and doing war crimes what they're doing if you don't know is russia are turning around and saying look if you want evacuation out of the city you can do that but the evacuation routes that russia are giving send them to russia we don't want that. That is a terrible, bad thing that is a definitely, in my opinion, a war crime. So they need to be evacuated into a safe country where they feel safe and supported and they can given, be given the proper, appropriate um, supplies to, to live and thrive their lives, right? Until things kind of settle down, if they will settle down. Okay. Um, we've been over that. So we're going we're gonna to look at some of these headlines and we're going to go over to the live map, okay? Polish teenager starts website to help Ukrainians start new schools. Fantastic. It's good to see. Um, satellite photos show destruction of residential areas in Maripol. Look at the state of that. Sheesh. Before and after. What a state. Shocking, isn't it? Maripol A convoy, convoy, convoy. Sorry, guys. I do have dyslexia. Um, still on its way. Earlier, we reported that a convoy included humanitarian aid and buses for evacuating civilians were on their way to several Ukrainian cities. Ukrainian officials said evacuations were continuing from several population centers in Kiev region, although they accused Russian forces of firing on one convoy from the village, killing seven people. Of course they did. Meanwhile, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, they're trying to stop all this. They're basically forcing the civilians' hands and being like, look, we're going to let you go. you got to come to Russia. They're really forcing their hands, and it's it's an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. Nice to see the, um, all of Europe, all of the world, pretty much, apart from the odd two, one or two countries that are obviously in the back pockets with Russia, are supporting Ukraine. They really are. So it's nice to see that. U.S. Um, authorizes $200 million in Ukrainian military funding. Ukraine will negotiate, but no surrender, foreign minister. Good. Good. UK Ministry of Defense provides new update on war. Let's have a look at this tweet real quick. Here we go. President Putin has publicly welcomed the recruitment of 16,000 mostly Middle, East, Middle Eastern volunteers to support his invasion of ukraine syrian mercenaries have deployed alongside russian proxy forces in libya since late 2020 this follows early reporting that russia will also be planning to deploy experienced mercenaries from russian private military companies to support the invasion russian this week has also been forced to acknowledge the use of conscript soldiers in its operation against ukraine as losses mount russia will be forced to draw on alternative sources to reinforce their overstretched regular force this so what i think should happen here if there's any mercenaries coming out of that country they need to be held held accountable as well if syrian uh if the syrian um, country syria the country letting these people these mercenaries go over to russia they need to be held accountable they really do i've seen a lot about this recently about um you know russia hiring people basically it's shocking but um it's, under, it, it, it's, it's expected, right? It's expected. These countries that don't have much money, there's going to be a lot of people who want money, who want to, you know, protect themselves or maybe just hate um, the Western ideology. are definitely going to fight with Russia on this one. Let's have a look here. 
Uh, more stuff about the Chelsea Football Club owner or soon to be previous owner because he's got to sell it now. Um, anti war protests around the country. We're seeing it in football, we're seeing it all over the place. Beautiful to see. Beautiful to see. Hyundai suspends Chelsea sponsor deal. They Hyundai were Hyundai were on the shoulder of Chelsea. We know that three, the, the mobile company three, have taken away their main sponsor off the kit, and that Hyundai now have as well. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens there. Um, because although this is more, you know, a sport thing and it doesn't really harm people, it's definitely uh, showing the consequences of um being friends with these people who are dangerous, like Putin, right? Anyway. Let's move over to the live map. Um, up here in Kiev, we, we haven't really talked much about down here. Russian forces are definitely making their way down here and doing really well. Let me refresh this actually so I can get the best updates, the live updates. Um, but I want to talk about the areas that uh, Russia have been taking here. Let me talk about this right-hand side real quick. I predicted that there was a spurt that was going here and here. And I predicted this ground would basically be covered like this and Russia would hold it like that. However, they haven't done that, and I don't know why. They might be breaking it down even more, but it's obvious that we've got to... We've, basically, these two spurts that I've been talking about for a very long time, right here, I've been talking about them for so long, they're now starting to push them together. And what they are doing, which is um, unfortunately a good idea, for, look at all these airports, airbase, all these different places. These are all either private or their military, or their public, right? They want to take as many of them as possible. So they're closing these two spurts, which I said was going to do. Like, they've done it right here. It, they're, they're going to take this. Russia are going to have this, unfortunately. If you can get out the area, please do. And I've said for ages that they're going to close this in. I was wondering whether they were going to close it in towards the river here, or up here. But it looks like they're taking the smaller option and closing here. If you notice, there's one, two airports along the way there. And when they do take this area, which my presumption is if they close this, they probably will. Look how many airports they would have taken there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine airports and one city. A big win for Russia, a big loss for Ukraine and the rest of the world, unfortunately. And, and drastic. Let's see what it says here. Video of Ukrainian artillery shelling Russian army. Ukrainian intelligence, Russian forces target a convoy of this. So this was the civilian convoy around here. Heartbreaking to see. Widespread damage, village in Kiev region after Russian army attack. So they're still pushing this way. Widespread damage. Oh, that's the same one. Must be just... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, down here. Lots of spurts. Lots of them. Um, I can't predict what's going on here now. This... This part here wasn't here last time. Or not to the extent of what it is now. So this is new right here. What I think might be happening... Obviously, they're trying to take Kiev. That's their goal, right? Is they're trying to take Kiev. Is they're probably going to try and swing ground. They're probably going to try and take this little bit they've got here. And I think they're going to try and do that, basically. And if they did that, which I would hate to say... They've taken all of the, basically all the western side of the city. So any supplies that are coming this way, anything that's aiding them. Let's see what this says. Widespread damage. Um, 20 busted with people evacuated. So look, there's people evacuating down this area. And they're looking like to try and push around the city. They want to surround the city. An old, old school tactic. They're probably going to try and do that. I don't, th I, at this point, guys, let me give you my full opinion. At this point... I don't think Russia are going to win this. I don't. Get away, fly. Russia, obviously, are very dangerous. But Ukraine have done what we all wanted them to do. Put up a good fight. And they're doing that. They really are. Well done, Ukraine. You're doing amazing. Keep up the good work. But there's a lot more fighting to go. And it's going to get even more dangerous. At the end of the day, you can see on this map, Russia are still taking ground. They're still fighting. And they're still taking ground. Which is not what we want. It's just taking them longer than they think. It's been nearly two weeks now. Or maybe it's been over two weeks. They said it was going to take two weeks to take Ukraine. Look at the land they've taken compared to the rest of Ukraine. There's still a long way to go. Russia are, Russia are losing. They're losing. But there's still a long way to go. And they are still gaining. They are still gaining. So we, they need to... Ukraine needs to be really careful here. 
and basically not be like, all right, they're losing. Let's relax a little bit. They need to put up even more of a fight now to kick them out as much as possible. Because this is going to... I tell you what, this has changed the world forever, this. I want people to understand this on this video now. This war in Ukraine has now changed the world. Putin is done for now. His own people, a lot of his own people don't like him. I saw, I watched a video the other day where there's a lot of people in Russia who don't even know there's a war going on. But Russia's lost the people now. He has, he's getting old. He's lost the people. He's on his way out. He is. This was his last ditch effort to do something, to bring the Soviet Union back. And he's failing. He's failing, thank God. And I'm worried that they're going to start using um, chemical warfare and other means to get through this because they're struggling, which I would not put past Russia, would not put it past them. So be very careful, guys. If you are in Ukraine, you know, I do these videos for everyone, people in Europe, people in the U.S., Especially for people in Ukraine, if you don't have this information, if you're struggling to get this information, these videos are for you. Stay safe. Piece of Russian self-propelled artillery was destroyed by uh, Chernihiv region. I'm so bad at these names. I am. Um, at this point, we need to be careful what's going on in surrounding countries. U.S. official, U.S. military aid to Ukraine includes anti-aircraft. Fantastic. Let's look at the most recent one, 33 minutes ago. Israeli Prime Minister spoke on the phone with Ukraine President for more than an hour to discuss the efforts to reach a ceasefire. Since the beginning of the butcher operation, 67 people have been burned near the church. Unbelievable. Where's that? Jeez. That's heartbreaking. Russian MLRS was destroyed by Ukraine drone. Boom! Let's go. Go on. Get it. Go on, get it. Go on. Get it. Yeah. So that's my prediction here in Kiev. Down here, I don't really have much of a prediction apart from these spurts coming out. They've been trying to take more, and they are taking more ground down here, right? And the most, the southern eastern area, they are taking the ground. They are putting up the fight. But Ukraine are really kicking them when they're down. They really are. And I want to see more of it. I want to see more of it. I want Russia to pay for what they've done. And I want them to stop brainwashing people and telling them that everything is all well and good. And this is just an op a, 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 what, a special operation or whatever it is. Ukraine, you're doing great. Keep up the good work. That's pretty much the update for now. Let me see if anything's been updated on here before we leave. Breaking. 13,000 Ukrainians evacuated through humanitarian corridors on Saturday. Yes! About 13,000 Ukrainians were evacuated through humanitarian corridors on Saturday. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister has said almost twice the number who managed to leave on Friday. In an online message, he said no one had managed to leave the besieged city of Maripol, blaming this on obstruction by Russian forces. Moscow had early accused Ukrainian forces of intentionally trapping, trapping people there. Amazing. This is what I want to see. I've been saying this on these videos many, many times. Guys, the humanitarian aspect is key. We need to look after the people of Ukraine. We need to keep them safe. We need to keep the children safe, the women safe, the older people safe, and then support the people fighting through giving them supplies and that's not just weapons that's food that's water that's any supply they need this is fantastic to see guys russia are losing ukraine are kicking ass and that's what i want to see it's what i want to see and i'm fed up of russia bullying people because after this russia are done their economy is done for done for guys members you're beautiful i love you I couldn't do this without you. Thank you for being awesome, guys. I really do love you. Um, probably going to do a live stream tomorrow. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we might do a, like, a little cheeky live stream update on the whole Ukraine situation and kind of go over some questions that you guys might have and any insight that I could possibly give. Um, if you are watching this from Ukraine or surrounding countries, again, like I've said over and over again, if you're from Ukraine, you should be trying to get out. Get out. Just get out. Unless you're able to fight, get out. If you're in surrounding countries... Always have a plan B. Protect your family. 
keep the children and women and the old people safe. If you're young, if you're healthy and you can fight, then fight, do it. But stay safe, guys, okay? Please stay safe. What's most important is that the humanitarian aspects are done for. And when I say fight, there's plenty of ways you can do that. That's giving supplies. It's escorting refugees out. It's processing refugees. It's homing refugees. It's giving refugees supplies. It's going out and giving um, supplies to soldiers. Do what you can to help, guys, if you're in the surrounding area. But please, for the love of God, please be safe. It's the most important. Everyone else in the world, have a plan B. Them preppers aren't looking so crazy anymore, are they, guys? Until next time, all my socials down below. If you need to get all of me, Twitter, Instagram, links down below. Um, the best way to reach me is through messages on Instagram and Twitter. Other than that, I love you all. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Please stay safe. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.